the head coach of the Silver and Black. We welcome John Gruden. Coach, good to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, JT, thanks for having me on. How you doing? Couldn't be better, Coach. Big Cinco de Mayo remote. We're thrilled that you're able to join us for a few minutes. I want to jump right in on offseason, free agency, the draft, the undrafted free agents. It seems like there's an enormous amount of new players coming in. This roster turnover is something that I'm sure you're really encouraged about getting some of these young players that you wanted. Yeah, very encouraged. And not only did we add some really good young players, we've added a lot of competition. This will be the most competitive training camp that I can remember. We've got roster battles all over the place, and our team is really working hard right now. I hope to see you at training camp. You'll see for yourself. I'll be there up there a bunch, Coach. Coach, I want to start with the defensive tackles, P.J. Hall and especially Maurice Hurst. I thought this was a critical need for the silver and black. Obviously, you and Reggie McKenzie saw the same thing. You have two impact young players who can hopefully blow up the line of scrimmage, stop the run, and get to the quarterback. Yeah, no doubt. We need an inside pass rush. Uh, when we won the Super Bowl in Tampa, everybody knows Warren Sapp was the engine that really made it happen. Paul Gunther, our defensive coordinator, comes from Cincinnati. We're running a 4-3 defense, and that three technique, the man that plays on the outside shoulder, the guard is important. He had five-time pro bowler Geno Atkins, and, and we have got to generate an inside rush, some guys that can wreak havoc, make the quarterback move laterally so guys like Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin can go to work. And we really do feel like we've added two of the top inside pass rushers in college football. John Gruden is our guest, head coach of the Raiders. Coach Arden Key, I think, is a critical piece in this draft in the third round. Obviously a talent that you believe has tremendous upside and dropped to you in the draft so you could take advantage of where he was. We had to bring him in here. He, in this draft, I believe, was at the top of our board as, as an outside pass rusher. He's got some pass rush movement skills that are rare. We all know he's had a couple incidents off the field, but this is a young guy that is going to take advantage, I do believe, of this opportunity. We need that third rusher, JT. Eventually, Bruce Irvin, Khalil Mack, they're going to get tired. You need to bring a guy in fresh off the bench, and that'll be key right now. And his, I think his versatility is going to serve us well. We feel like we can move him and Khalil and Bruce around and create some problems for people. Coach, you talked about it yesterday after practice, and you addressed the media up there in Oakland about – the issues and the critics out there. Clearly, this is a player that you believe with the right mentors, with your staff and you being a leader of this team, anyone who's had a problem in the past will turn it around now with the silver and black. Well, we're going to give them an opportunity. We've got a great coaching staff here, guys that are outstanding leaders. We've got some real strong football character in our locker room. We just added one of the best locker room leaders in all of football yesterday in Derek Johnson. You know, guys like Khalil Mack, who we've talked about, and Bruce Irvin have already established themselves in this league. And they're going to help this young man, I think, stay in the channel of success. There's risks with everybody. And I don't know who our third-round pick was last year or the last three years, but uh, we feel as good about Arden Key as we do any of those guys. John Gruden is our guest. Coach, Gary on Connolly, you addressed that. He's close to coming back. Obi Melanfanu last year. But the haul that you've had in the offseason with Leon Hall, Richard Melvin, Daryl Worley, this is what I needed to see. This is what fires me up is the ability to have this level of competition in the defensive backfield coming into camp. Well, you know, we didn't have the, the money salary cap-wise to put $100 million into a player or two, so we sprayed it around a little bit. And, look, Leon Hall is a dynamic leader. This is a man that will bite you. He is a nasty football player, over 100 tackles, I think, three or four times. He understands Paul Gunther's scheme. He's got a lot of locker room presence. And he needs to show the way to Gary on Conley. Conley's got to step up. He's got to earn his job. He hasn't done that yet, but we expect him to. And Rashad John Melvin played extremely well. All you got to do is turn on the film last year when he guarded Antonio Brown of the Steelers. He has talent. And we're going to give Worley another opportunity. We just drafted Nick Nelson out of Wisconsin. So you said it. We've got a lot of competition. And don't forget this name, Sharice Wright. He's a guy that knows how to compete on special teams. He's going to be a hard man to get rid of. Coach, take us behind the scenes, whatever you can tell us about trading out of 10 to 15 to get Colton Miller a two-for-one to get the wide receiver Martavius Bryant. I think the deep threat is the key to that draft pick and obviously getting a big body up front so Tom Cable can mold him into being an eventual pro bowler. 
I give Reggie McKenzie a lot of credit. There were some really good players on the board that we wanted to take. You know, Derwin James was a very good safety, but we took a safety in the first round two years ago. We took a safety in the second round last year. You can't take a safety with a premium pick every year. Uh, Donald Penn is a 35-year-old left tackle. He's nursing a Liz Frank foot injury. He's not competing right now. We let go of our right tackle last year. One of our tackles uh, just got suspended for the first four games of the season. We needed to address the tackle position. And Derek Carr has been hurt the last two seasons. And we liked Colton Miller a lot. We felt he would be there at 15. Reggie pulled the trigger. He moved down. He picked up a three. He picked up a five. And that trade not only netted us an outstanding young prospect on the blind side of Carr, but it got us a premier deep threat that we have not had here. And uh, Oakland Raider fans, real Oakland Raider fans, are going to recognize the speed. And uh, that fifth-round pick also helped translate into Arden Key. So I give Reggie McKenzie and his staff a lot of credit for making that, making that trade. Wrapping it up with John Gruden. Coach, with Derek Carr, I was there when you were working with Gannon. I saw with my own eyes when you would get off the plane and Rich would get back to the facility. You'd be in there at 4 in the morning. The demands that you put on that quarterback helped him become an MVP. Now I look at Derek Carr and his maturity and the next process in his career. He looked great so far when I saw the veteran midi camp. You saw him on the field up close. What are the keys to his development as we get into this upcoming season? The sky's the limit with him. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to stay on the field. And that's the number one, and I think that's the only negative that I've seen in Derek Carr in the last couple seasons. He's been hit too much, and he's missed time. Uh, He can make all the throws. He's athletic. JT, I walk him off at 5 o'clock in the morning in April. And guess who's there at 5.15? I, I'm not kidding you. This man comes in since the offseason program started. He is a dynamic leader. He really wants to be great. And when he breaks the huddle with Jared Cook at tight end, Marshawn Lynch and, and Doug Martin at halfback, and he's got Martavis Bryant, Mari Cooper, and Jordy Nelson with a big, strong offensive line, I think I can see the excitement in his eyes. It's going to be cool. Wrapping it up with John Gruden, the the wide receiver Amari Cooper, Jordy Nelson, that type of dynamic combination. I think of what the Patriots have done in the slot. I think a big wide receiver threat over the top. Coach Amari Cooper, we talk about critics. The critics have been on him for drops and some of the inconsistent play. How do you get more out of him? Well, he had some injuries last year. I think he got to go back to his success that he had as a rookie and as a second-year man. He's one of the few men in the history of football to have back-to-back thousand-yard seasons to start his career. We got to quit changing coordinators. We got to quit changing uh, head coaches. Hopefully, uh, I can last more than a year and we can put this system in place and he can develop. But when you keep changing the system and changing the coach and changing the way you practice. It is really hard, not only on a quarterback, but it's hard on a young wideout, and I think that has had something to do with his setback. Coach, I'm going to let you go, but I'm looking at Rod Martin, Reggie Kinlaw. I'm looking at Napoleon McCallum. The turnout that you had for your press conference has never been seen before in this league. Leave us on this note. What does the Raider Nation mean to you, these alumni, and this whole experience coming back to Oakland? That's the only reason I'm here, JT, and uh, I, I mean that. We had an event the other night, and I got to reunite with some of the great legendary Raiders. Lester Hayes was there, and Daryl LaMonica. Uh, it was great to see Jim Plunkett again. And, of course, Willie Brown is hanging around with Ray Chester and Jim Otto. Uh, it's just a, a storied tradition. It's, it takes, takes a lot of, uh, I think, uh, time to talk about how much it means to me. But we're trying to have these men rub off on our new players Uh, there's a strong respect for our our legendary tradition here. Thank you so much, Coach. I know you have a busy day. Appreciate it. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, JT.